Hello, and welcome back to a world of ice and fire mod. I'm your host, Lucares Blackfire. As you can see from the map here, I have conquered most of the Seven Kingdoms. I am doing rather well in a world of ice and fire mod, and I think now is the time for me to provide some wisdom to you, my viewers. This is going to be my A World of Ice and Fire tip video 2.0. I made one earlier and um, some time ago and it, it was not very good. I lacked certain knowledge that since that time I have gained. Now, <clears throat> the first thing you need to know is that when starting your game, uh, when you're creating your character, uh, the culture you select, whether it's Valyrian, Northern, Westerlands, Whatever culture you select, that those those kind of troops are going to be your troops. Because I'm Lucarius Blackfire and I've chosen a Valyrian um, ancestry, my soldiers are crownlanders like those belonging to House Targaryen here. Though whatever culture you choose, it doesn't impact too much uh, how you play the game. Every faction has its strengths and weaknesses. Um, the weakest is probably the wildlings. They're terrible against cavalry for one thing, but all the other factions, they have decent soldiers. I particularly like the soldiers of the Reach, but what I have is fine as well. Also, when you are selecting your character, um, there's a trait. Myself, I'm a natural leader. I think you can also get um, a natural warrior too. Whenever I press U in battle, I can do this once every minute or so. It increases the morale of my men. Well, not the morale actually, the actual hit points. They gain more hit points, uh, you know, if, they're, if they've lost some. And I think if you're a warrior, the pressing you in battle um, increases your own health, making you fight longer. Uh, both traits are good to have. Also, when playing a world of ice and fire, uh, you, you should check your options when you're starting the game. Um, me, I like to have my battle size somewhere between three and four hundred. That way I can actually push my enemy back during sieges if I'm defending. And yet uh, if I'm attacking them, I also have a good chance of taking the castle as well. Now, you also want to check damage to the player. I've reduced it to the easiest because a world of ice and fire is extremely difficult. It really is. Um, when I started the game, it was up here. I took the same amount of damage as everyone else, and I had a very difficult time early on before I realized this. Um, I allow my the damage to my allies to be like reg everyone else. I'm a decent player, but you can also reduce that as well to easiest or what have you. If you're not the best warband player, combat is the same. I generally don't mess with these options very much. Anyway, that's uh, 
good thing to do when you're starting a world of ice and fire. Now, also, when you're playing this particular mod, you're going to want to, hmm, well, find some good equipment. Let's look at the armor. Nothing particularly good here. I believe it was down in Voluntaries where I saw some decent armor. In fact, I may actually buy that. Oh, pirates. Perfect timing. I was hoping to demonstrate a bandit battle at some point. Let's look at the inn for now. This here is Randy. He is a ransom broker. I have some prisoners and ransom brokers, which are only found in Essos and the lands north of the wall, are the best individuals to sell prisoners to. However, Once you're the lord of a castle, you get a master of laws over here. Now you can sell prisoners to him as well, but he sells them for slightly less than the ransom brokers in Essos and the lands north of the wall. But that's not why I'm here right now. No, I'm going to talk to you about equipment. Armour. This scale armor is perfect. It has 52 body armor, which is great. I'm going to, and it costs 6,500. It's a good price for armor. It's much better than this lordly scale hauberk, which costs 122,000 and 54 body armor. However, <clears throat> there's another thing we can do in Voluntaries and any other town in a World of Ice and Fire mod. We need to find, to get, take a stroll through the town and find us a, an armorer. Now the armorer, when I talk to him, can increase the strength of the body armor which is very important. Uh, it will make things much better. The Targaryen armor, you saw my character just a moment ago, had maybe 50 body armor when I got it, but I went to the armorer and, well, I increased it quite a bit. It has 58 body armor now. I'll cut away here while I look for the armorer. This could take a time. See you in a moment. Okay, we have found the armorer. Now I want him to refine my scale armor. It's plain, he can make it thick for 2,600. I can agree. Refine it, scale armor, from thick to reinforced and I can make it for 14,000 more lordly but I don't want I don't want to right now now let's take a look this was 52 body armor it's now 56 I could have made it 58 lordly scale armor is 54 now this is actually much cheaper uh, by going to the armorer to upgrade it rather than buying something that costs a hundred thousand. It costs only a fraction of the price. Now if you're starting out obviously you cannot do this. I have been playing the game for 1,522 in-game days. 
So, it's no problem for me. I have over a million silver stags. And that's only with myself. I think my... Uh, the person who handles my finances, he has over seven million. Perhaps even eight million now. <laughs> but that doesn't help you. How do you get good armor? How do you get good equipment at the start of the game? Well, you go to your armorers and your weaponsmiths, and uh, if you don't have anything good, you go to them and purchase it. But if you're starting the game, you don't have much money. How do you make more money? Well, inside of every town, there's a training ground. Now, when you're starting out and you don't have much equipment, mm -mm. You probably won't be able to win a tournament, which are held all over the kingdoms. However, even if a tournament isn't fighting in the town, you can always go to a melee fight. Tell me about the melee fight. Can you tell me about the rewards? Now, if you can beat three opponents, before going down, you'll get 15 silver stags. You get 30 for striking down 6. 75 stags if you can defeat 10 opponents before going down. 180 if you can defeat 20 opponents. And if you can be the last man standing, you'll get 750 stags. Now this is what I did to get enough money to buy my first set of decent equipment. Now it is plus 50 body armor you want early on, but you don't need to. Now I suggest when you're fighting in these melee fights to get your first set of decent armor, you want to get a bow. That way you're not running in there. In the bottom right hand corner, you can see that I have high stamina, but the more I run around and swing my weapon, the lower my stamina will become, making my attacks um, weaker, and my um, and I will lose my ability to run around. That's where the bow comes in handy in these particular contests. Now, because I have such good armor, I'm not likely to be defeated. There is a possibility of defeat, but... My character is very experienced. I have great armor. So, I'm likely to win. But if I were to take off my armor... I would be in a little bit of difficulty. Now there is another way to earn money early on in the game. You can join a Lord's retinue, fight in their war band. You could also trade. Now being one man or one man with a handful of followers, it's rather difficult, I would imagine, to do much for trade. The more trade goods you have, the slower you are. However, if you are just one man and you take a ship from one free city to the next, selling your trade goods, you could make a good profit. You'll need at least three trade to make this work. And you have to travel to the right ports, buying low in one place and selling high in another. Myself, I find White Harbour is an excellent place to buy furs. And I suggest port cities because if you're just one man, it doesn't cost a lot of money to travel from one port to another. 
Now, as your war brand grows, of course, you'll want to buy a ship eventually. But if you're just one man, maybe 10 or 20 men even, it's worth it to travel from one, to pay to travel from one port to another. Ooh. ganging up on me. <laughs> of course I'm talking and that distracts me somewhat from fighting. You can sell Furs for a good price, I know, uh, at um, Sisterton, which is right next to White Harbour. You can sell them for a decent price in Dragonstone, Gold Town, Maidenpool, King's Landing, Duskendale. And you can buy them fairly cheaply in Pentos, Mir, Tyrosh. Can sell them decently down in the Weeping Town and Sunspear as well. The choice is up to you. Once you've sold enough, you can buy a decent set of armor. And once you have a good set of armor, you can fight in tournaments and <laughs> have some chance of winning. Now, as you no doubt know, warbands are not cheap, especially in this mod. Let's take a look at these peasants, these levies. To upgrade a peasant, it costs 112 silver stags. For a levy, 176 stags. How do you get money to pay for all this? Well, I would suggest traveling around the various cities that are having tournaments and fighting them. I find that's one of the best and easiest ways to get money in a World of Ice and Fire mod. And with those tournaments comes great rewards. And with those rewards, you can buy productive enterprises in the various um, towns throughout Essos and Westeros. Now, hmm. there's no one productive enterprise that's the best. It varies from region to region which productive enterprise you want to buy. You want to look through all of them and select one that has the highest profits. Let's look at my budget report. I get to that menu by pressing C. Ironworks at Gold Town gets 1,200 stags. Brewery from Case, 745 and various other things. Rents and tariffs also from the towns I own. And I make sure that I own every town because they're more profitable than castles, I find. I believe once you have a productive enterprise in practically every single town south of the wall, and you might want to even get those north of the wall, but in this particular mod I haven't even done that yet. <laughs> But, once you have productive enterprises all over the place, you'll have enough to fund a decent sized warband. Once you have a good warband, you could become a mercenary, fight for different kingdoms, perhaps even join one as a lord. You'll be able to fight bandit armies and enemy lords and so on. Another great way to earn money is capturing lords in battle. If a lord owns a castle, he will sell for a good ransom. 
roughly 20,000 at least. Certain lords in the Reach I've sold for ransom. Sold for 100,000 or close to it. Kings can sell for over 100,000 in some cases. I've know I've sold Mance Raider for at least 60,000 at times. Yes, there are many ways to earn money. Now, as I said, as I've said, once your army is grown to a certain point, it's not very practical to pay uh, to pay for passage from one port to another. At that point, you want to buy ships for your men. You can look at the attributes here. Navigation helps increase the movement speed of your ships by 3%. Sailing Master uh, increases the number of ships you can command. To even command one ship, you need at least one Sailing Master. Those are two important skills to have for yourself. Also, foraging is... <laughs> Let me show you something. My party can command 4,761 troops. Part of this is due to my renown. Part of it is due to my leadership that I have. But also, if you, in this particular mod, if you increase the leadership of your companions, it also increases your party size. Another thing that increases your party size in this particular mod is the number of fiefs you control. Every village, castle, and town steadily increases the size of your army. Renown, of course, from fighting in tournaments and battles does the same. But Renown can go up and down depending upon if you win or if you lose battles. The size of your army also means that if I were to have 500 or more men, I would re I would need a lot of food to feed that army. Even if I were to fill it up, if I have a thousand men in my party, it will be gone in almost no time at all. So, it's even a good idea to increase the oh, let's say, foraging skills of some of your companions. Allows party to forage for five food per skill level. That way you're not losing as much food if you have, an, have a gigantic army. <laughs> now, I kind of got off topic here. I was talking about ships. Now, your f the flagship of any fleet you command must be a cog. Cogs are fairly fast and they can hold 90 men. If you are defeated in a sea battle, you will lose all of your ships except for your flagship when you eventually escape. Cogs are a great starting vessel to have because they can command 90 men, as I've mentioned. You'll also need to go to ports from time to time to make repairs to your ships, fighting in battles or little random events like a, one of your ships is hit by a gale of wind in a storm, will cause some damage. Hmm. Now then. Another great feature in this particular mod are spies. Spies are extremely useful. If you have a very large army and you can't keep up with pirates or lords or what have you, all you need to do is right click and you can skirmish with them. Now I could send all 11 of the spies I have with me, but I always send the 
minimum number, which is five. That way, if I can't catch up or if something distracts me, uh, I can leave the spies uh, to die by getting killed by a lord or something. But by sending only five, it lessens the risk. If by some chance they do happen to die, I'll still have other spies with me. So we're going to chase these bandits. Another good thing is to capture lords. I mean, capture enemies. I have around 300 soldiers. And I can carry roughly 150 prisoners. Now it's the size of your party in this mod, not your um, prisoner management. Where is that? Trade, leadership, entertainment, persuasion. Hmm. There is no prisoner management skill here. Could have sworn there was. But as I mentioned, it's the number of troops you can command that determines how many prisoners you can hold. I have a blunt weapon here, which will knock out enemies. Archers can hold back here. By capturing enemies, I can sell them later to the ransom brokers or my master of laws. Twenty-nine men I can carry. You can also recruit prisoners if there's anyone you want in particular. I generally don't want pirates. Now these selections here, I can leave the dead to rot and claim the loot. That'll make me move faster. I'll claim more loot as well and if there's a particularly large enemy party nearby, you might want to choose this one, though it decreases your relation with your men. I can burn the dead in an offering to Relore and leave all the loot. That'll increase the morale, but I won't get any loot. I can burn the dead in an offering to Relore, gather and share any loot as is common. I'll get less loot, but my men will get some morale from this, so I will. And I get some reputation too. And here are my spies. Now I need to pick these up, otherwise they will just stay there. And if they stay there, I can't use my spies as skirmishers anymore. So it's a wise move to pick them up. Another useful individual in a World of Ice and Fire mod is my Cell Sword Captain. In addition to that are the Trumpeters and Dornish Standard Bearers. Now I'm going to do a little experiment. Before I ever use my Cell Sword Captain, I always save my game. And here's why. Sell Sword Captain, let's talk. I wanted you to lead your own party. There we go. Oh no, I just threw away all of my men. Let's talk about prisoners and so on. Oh. I gave away I threw out a hundred of my own soldiers. That's why you save. You want to press done when you do it. Where is he? 
Oh, this is just like King's Landing. He's hiding somewhere. I'll cut away for now and come back a bit later. Okay, here he is again. Now, let's um, quit without saving. And try this again. Here I am. Now, when you select a sales hall captain, you want to try this. I want you to lead your own party. You want to press done after that, otherwise you'll lose all your men. Um, hmm. I want you to join me again. Now, I could fill him up with as many men as I can command personally. Now, if you're leading a sellsword captain early on in the game, you don't have a castle or anything, you want to fill them up. It, I find that if a sellsword captain has at least 200 soldiers, most enemies on the map will not attack them. Maybe enemy lords. But um, if I were to, let's say, have a Celso captain patrol following me and uh, we engage in battle and the Celso captain himself is taken out, well, the party, uh, I, I can no longer take them into my party, really. It's a bit of a problem. I'm not sure if it's a bug or intentional. But it is how it is in this particular version of the game. Now, trumpeters and standard bearers are extremely useful. What can you do in battle? Uh, me? The soldier salutes you and answers in a loud, proud voice. I'm useful, my lord. I'm a musician from Essos. My music will increase the courage of your men during a battle. If things go wrong, they'll fight longer before fear seizes them. Tell me about yourself. Trumpeters have a little leadership. I think that helps increase my leadership. Keep moving. Standard bearers, let's talk to them. What do you do in battle? I am very useful, my lord. I am a standard bearer in the service of the Lord of Dorne. When the men see me during battle, they gain courage. If things go wrong, they fight longer before fear seizes them. Tell me about yourself. Hmm. He has one leadership as well. Now, I find that the trumpet, that the trumpeters and banner carriers increase my leadership to nine right here leadership increases the number of troops i can command by five and reduces and every leader point reduces troop wages by five percent now in this mod troops are extremely expensive especially high-end ones like oh let's say sworn swords 76 stags now, let's see what happens when I give my sellsword captain my trumpeters. I want you to lead your own party. Done. I want to talk about troops and prisoners. Give them my trumpeters and my Dornish standard bearers. Done. Now, let's take a look at myself. Attributes. I'm down to six because I gave away all of my trumpeters and banner carriers. Now, let's take a look at those sworn swords again. Oh, keep moving. Uh, they cost 97 now because I gave away those troops and there's 36 of them.
see what I mean. They're good for increasing your own leadership. I want you to join me again. <clears throat> also, let's take a look at Brienne of Tarth here. Equipment. She has a House Lannister banner. Now, banners and horns, if you give them to your companions, they increase your party morale and improve the leadership and tactics of the companions that hold them. Let's look at her skills. She has about five in leadership, which helps to increase my own leadership. All these things are very important. Sirio Pharrell. He has nine leadership. How does he have that much? There. He has a horn, increases party morale, and improves leadership and tactics. Though he doesn't have a banner. All these things are very good for increasing your party. I hope you all take these tips into mind uh, when you're building your army. Increase the leadership of your companions. I find having over 30 standard bearers of any one type to be very important. You need to have one type though. That's why I've saved many of the banner carriers from various sieges that I've fought in. Now that that's done. Hmm. Upgrading soldiers, that's a tricky matter as well. Lately, I've been increasing... Um, here's someone I can increase. Reach Knights. I've only been increasing the high-end troops in my own party. I've been leaving um, recruits and prisoners for the most part. Uh, levies, anyone medium strength and less really. Uh, I've refused to upgrade them. I've only placed them inside of castles after battles. If I notice that a castle me and my men have taken have any high-end troops like a Westerland Scout or Knight or something, I will bring them into my own party, or if I'm fighting that particular faction, I may give those particular troops to some of my lords. That way I don't have to pay for them. <clears throat> I find it's a good way to do things. Now. After a certain time playing the game, you may want to become a, a mercenary to a faction. Now, there are advantages to being a mercenary. For one thing, you're getting paid to fight for a certain kingdom. Uh, you won't get a castle because you're not a lord, but you can always change your allegiance as a mercenary. You just need to wait for your contract to expire after a month. Now, early on, I was a mercenary to Norvos up here, and <clears throat> after my contract expired, um, I left them. However, Norvos was at war with the Dothraki Kalasar, which was down here, and after my contract expired, I was no longer aggressive to them. At the very start of the game, I was aggressive to the Dothraki Kalasar, but after my contract expired and I left, I was no longer aggressive towards them. When I was with Dragonstone for a time, as a mercenary, I left them. They were at war with the Westerlands over here, but I was no longer aggressive to the Westerlands as I was at the start of the game. That's a very useful thing for being a mercenary. Now, being a lord, you can fight for a faction, you can lead armies in battle, you can be martial. Now, being martial is very interesting. I know that you can go into the capital of your particular nation and you can take out soldiers from the capital, let's say it's Dragonstone. 
Now, if you're going to be a lord of a fact in a faction, it's a good idea to leave levies behind to replace the good troops you take out. Um, let's see what else. You can also get castles for fighting for lords. You have to besiege a castle yourself if you want uh, your king to provide it to you. However, if you want to take a castle for a faction, but you don't really want the castle yourself, you can go to a few lords and say, can you besiege this fortress for me? Uh, you have to wait a, about a day or so. Then you talk to them again and say, together, you and I can take this fortress. You should assault immediately and they will attack the fortress. This is very useful. Uh, most likely the lord that besieged the castle will get the fortress if you don't want it yourself. Also I find in this mod uh, there are a lot of dangers in besieging castles yourself. There's a risk of disease, of um, the enemy sallying out to fight you. I find it's always, I find especially once I became a king it was better to have other lords besiege castles for me. If they besiege it for me and I join in, if I talk to them afterwards, they increase with me by one relation after the battle. They collect all of the prisoners inside. It's possible I might not have enough room for all the prisoners. I could ask them to flee in the direction of one of my castles and they'll leave all their prisoners inside. That's a useful thing to know. However, if they are a martial personality type, they won't go, they won't flee to a castle unless you yourself are martial and you tell them to. So there are advantages to being martial, to being a lord. <laughs> now, let's talk about the castle staff. Where am I? Right here. I collected my Sell sword captain patrol. Now, when you make a patrol, of course, you need to tell them to follow you. But there's enough of that. Now, voluntaries is not my capital, but I can change that. I can go to my household possessions, take out some tools and some velvet. I like to keep about three fine velvets and tools each in my um, household possessions. Currently I only have two because I made my capital King's Landing a little while ago, but I'll change it back after my point's been made. You can manage your town, of course, but I'll move my court here right now. I have all the upgrades I really want here. I will establish it as my court. Oh, earlier, when I went to the armorer, the armorer now has 21,000 stags. If you have a lot of trade goods that you want to sell, you might want to upgrade your armor or one of your companion's armor. It's a good way to increase the money in a town if you have a lot of goods you wish to sell. And the town itself has run out of funds. Now let's talk about the court. Go to the Lord's Hall. Up here is my Hibbled. Now you can always do this. You can ask him for a mission to strengthen the unity of the kingdom. I already have one of those. I need to resolve a dispute between Lord Rickard Carstark and Elder Nestamont. 
I'm sure most of you know about resolving disputes. You can do that with your wife or your minister in certain mods or in native. I can dispatch emissaries to, uh, let's say, Dragonstone. I can send a gift to increase the relation with the faction. I can ask him to help me attack the north, which is mostly destroyed by now. I can offer my vassalage to him or declare war upon him. Declaring war if I'm not provoked decreases your relation with the lords. But if you are provoked, it increases it. And I can indict a disloyal vassal for treason. That also decreases your relation with your lords. I can appoint a marshal, myself or some other individual. Mostly I've been fighting without a marshal since my kingdom started. I've been taking castles in the manner I described not too long ago by asking my lords to besiege them for me. And of course there's training, either archers or melee troops in my capital. I can ask him to rejoin my party. Actually, hold on. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. I can grant fiefs to my vassals, of course. I have a few castles and villages that I have not yet given away yet. Most of the villages and towns are mine. A few castles are mine too. I can make myself Lord of Carhold if I so choose. I want to hire a new staff member. Hmm. I guess I have everyone I need. I can exchange prisoners with various factions. I can persuade a Lord to join our kingdom. Hmm. I will offer... Car hold. In the north, so... Lyessa Flint. I don't think um, Carl Pono likes me. And I will send... Uh, Daisy... No. Hagen the Beautiful, I think, has the most persuasion other than Syria Pharrell. So I'll send her. I can spy on another kingdom. Let's say the Reach. I may go to war with them soon. Send uh, Maya Stone. <laughs> send a message. I've never tried that before. Certainly, my lord. You have a raven ready at your disposal. To whom would you like to send a message? I've heard the followings are nearby. Ah, these are all the kings. No, perhaps later. Give me a report. But of course, sire. I have it ready to present. And this is my kingdom report, essentially. I can... Press C when I'm on the map outside and go through that by selecting Kingdom. And here's my Master of Laws, my Master of Coin, and my Master of Whisperers. They're all useful in their own way. I can ask him to hire spies. One spy for 3,000, that's a bit expensive. Sometimes I hire them in taverns for far less than that. <laughs> Let's talk about domestic policy. I can change certain aspects of certain things in here. What I use him mostly for is to send messengers to uh, Rickard Carstark to accompany me. Thank you. Send a message to Elden Estamont to accompany me. I still need to do that mission. <laughs> I can ask for information of about the Lords regarding the Fief of Carhold. 
talks about who, who has the most support and so on. Information about a lord in uh, the Vale, Eon Hunter. Calculating person, manages, manages this town. He seems to be devoted to Lysa Aaron. So I wouldn't want to convince him. Oh, about the North. What about her? Calculating person. She seems to be vengeful towards Rob Stark, so she may actually join me. <laughs> I can also send a gift to a settlement. Um, now, the gifts I can send to settlements increase their relation with me. They can be towns or villages. Now, this is very useful if you're wanting to recruit troops. You can send fish, cheese, or honey to villages. Now, to a person, I could send a gift to a lord or a lady. To a lord, I would need 150 units of wine, ale, or oil, but I don't have it. I could send a gift to a lady, dyes, tile, I'm not sure what that is, and fine cloth. I could send fine cloth if I so chose, but no. I find the ones with the, the lords, sending gifts to lords doesn't work, but to settlements it does. It may be I have an older version of this mod, so that's that. Of course you can check your household possessions, I have many things. I've been taking a lot of um, food when I was up in the north. But I've also been holding trade goods like furs, wool cloth and hides, which I intend to sell later rather than keeping it all in my party, my party um, inventory. I can change the tax rate of lands in, but uh, I've chosen not to do this in this particular mod. Um, it seems to be a bit buggy. Some of the lands I have are way down in relation with me, yet some go way up without reason also. It's strange. I can hire personnel to extricate losses to make sure they intimidate you even a bit. <laughs> and of course I can dismiss him from my service, but I like my Master of Whisperers. I like the messengers he sends out. I could send one to Valor. I can ask him to accompany me. Go to a location, patrol a location, flee to a location, besiege a location, or raid around a location. Now when the messenger arrives at a lord, they will follow the instructions if they have enough troops uh, for maybe a day and a half, two days at the very most, and only if they have positive relation with you. If their relation with you is less than zero, they're not going to do anything you say. Or if they're far away from what the, you want them to do, they won't do anything either. So just a heads up for those of you who think you might be able to use that. When I was making war in Westeros, the messengers I sent to Essos almost never got to the Lords over there, and if they did, they didn't answer because I was so far away. Master of Laws is also an interesting individual. I've been building shrines to Relore lately, so I want to report on my kingdom's faith. Due to our reports from our kingdom, we managed to convert 1,858 people to our faith. Ah, Lord of Light, protect us. <laughs> Could always be better. How goes the war? We're at war with the North, the Free Folk, and Tyrosh. And, as you can see, I get reports on that. I can ask about a settlement in Barrowton. Wish I can send a spy to Barrowton to withdraw 300 stacks from your treasury? Mm, hold on. Didn't know about that. I haven't really gone through all the features, only those that are important, I suppose. I could release a prisoner. 
king of Kohor, who was in Kohor, and I'm going to send him to the wall. First Sword of Bravos, Lord Master, blah blah and blah blah of Lys. <laughs> I want to report both the Kingdom's forces. I have 41,000 soldiers garrisoned in 33 towns and 79 castles. I have 1,000, 12,000 soldiers in the field. I have quite an army, clearly. <laughs> you can report about my army. Myself, I currently have 26,000 soldiers garrisoned in 33 towns and 33 castles. I have 320 soldiers in my convoy and nearly 3,000 soldiers in patrols, which I'm keeping up north around Last Hearth and Nori. I could ask about the number of troops in the convoy of Lord, oh, let's say King Renly. Mm -hmm. Those are all of his soldiers. And of course, I can request the status of the foe River Run. 500 soldiers. Thank you. I can also recruit soldiers. Um, I find if I ask them to go to New Valyria to collect soldiers, um, they don't always go off. I have to tell them to go somewhere else to recruit soldiers. I find it a good idea to ask them to go to places like, since I'm in near Volantis, collect troops from the Volantine Fiefs, or maybe Mia, or Pentos, or the Dothraki Kalasar, or something like that. And collect troops from Volantis. You can coll collect anywhere from 5 to 50 men might actually be a good idea to select fewer, but I'm greedy. <laughs> and of course, I can always sell prisoners to him if I have no ransom broker or man of the night's watch. <laughs> and I can dismiss him, but thank you for your counsel, Master of Laws. Then there's the Master of Coin. I require a report on financial affairs. I have an income of 285,000 silver stags, a cost of 88,000 stags. We're losing 200,000 to tax inefficiency. Oh my. 69%. Mm. Oof. That's unfortunate. Though I am making roughly 80 some thousand a month, a week I mean, so I'm fine. I have 7,652,000 silver stags in the treasury. I could withdraw a few. Now I have a million with myself, roughly. I could change tax rates of various communities, but it's a little buggy in this particular version of the game, so hopefully they fix that. I can manage fiefs. In the, I find in the towns I can only build prison towers, unless I go there personally, in which case I can build other things. I've built, um, you can build a manor, messenger post, which I usually don't. You can also build a tower to help defend it longer against raids, a mill to increase um, the amount of money you make there, a school to improve the relation with the various villages, and a temporal to relore to increase the faith. I've been doing that a lot. And of course the household. And that's pretty much everything with the court. Hmm. 
Now, before I leave here, I should probably tell you what I use these particular members of my court for. Hibbled, for example. As I mentioned, I use him mostly to strengthen the unity of our kingdom missions uh, for those. Improve my standing. I do use him to dispatch emissaries to various kingdoms. Let's say... Tyrosh. I could enter into a truce, I could send gifts, I could try to build an alliance, things of that nature. Dispatch an emissary to, let's say, the Reach. I could express my goodwill and so on, build alliances. Though I think I did this poorly in this particular mod. Oh well. I maintained alliances with Dragonstone, the Iron Islands, that's important. I almost n never indict a vassal for treason. I do appoint myself as marshal upon occasion, and I do occasionally appoint certain lords at times, but I seldomly appoint a marshal at all. Hmm. I do have him train men, melee fighters or archers, depends what I need in my capital. But at this particular stage in the game, I'm... I've pretty much won, so it doesn't really matter much to me now. Hmm. I usually choose one one companion to be the minister or hand or whatever you call this. Of course, I hand out fiefs to my vassals. Um, I almost never exchange prisoners. I do send people to persuade lords to join me. I don't really spy on kingdoms. And that's pretty much all I use my minister for. My master of laws. I don't usually look at the reports or how the war's going or information on a settlement. I have occasionally released prisoners, but if I find these prisoners in any of the towns or castles I own, I'm sending them to the wall because these are all from Essos and they have so few vassals in any case. The Night's Watch is steadily growing. Um, I do recruit a lot of soldiers, as I've previously mentioned, uh, recruit from Volantis. And of course I collect enlisted patrols pardon me. If I have a large garrison, sometimes I will send out a patrol somewhere that needs more troops, or in this particular stage of the game, while I, con while I control the north, I have sent patrols up to Nori and Last Hearth to guard against wildling incursions. When I create a patrol, I usually create a big one, a uh, lot of troops, usually a mix of good and medium, for the most part. And that's mostly what I use my Master of Laws for. My Master of Coin. I do use... I do take money from the Treasury, of course, sometimes. Though lately I've only taken money out if I have less than one million stags. Which I happen to have. I manage many thief improvements. Um, from here you can only increase um, castles and towns by, in by improving a prison tower. Otherwise you have to go to each individual town or castle to add other improvements. However, let's say fool's folly i can improve add improvements like mills watchtowers schools manors and messenger posts i do not build manors or messenger posts but i do build mills watchtowers and schools and of course shrines to a law all praise the lord of light uh, but uh, i have i find that most times when 
I'm selecting upgrades for villages. I have to physically be at the village to upgrade a shrine to the Lord of Light, as it's a new feature in this mod. And naturally, of course, I use the household possessions. I store trade goods or... I don't generally hold feasts um, because I'm so good at keeping my relation with my lords very good. And that's most of what I use my Master of Coin for. Master of Whisperers. I... Almost never hire spies because I have many and I can recruit them much cheaper in taverns. 3,000 for one spy. Not worth it. I don't talk about domestic policies. I don't talk about information. I almost never talk about the mood regarding a fief, though. Let's take a look at Carhold. Some have supporters, some don't. Most of what I use a Master of Whisperers for is sending out messengers to, oh, let's say, Elden Estamont. Most times I ask them to accompany me. And then once they are following me, I give them orders to besiege a place or patrol an area, something like that. I do send gifts. Um, for some reason, the Lord and Lady gifts, as I mentioned, are buggy. So I don't use that. They don't seem to work. The settlement ones, however, do. I send chish, <laughs> cheese, fish, and honey when I have 300 units of any one. But I'm currently out. Of course, I checked the household possessions. I avoid using change tax rates and hire personnel to gather taxes because I don't, I'm not sure if they're buggy or not. But I don't use those. Anyway, that's how I use these four individuals here. Anyway, I'll um, move out now and come back in a little bit. See you in a moment. Now, after being a lord, you may want to know about where do I want to start my kingdom? Personally, I chose Essos. It has many small factions, easily defeated, once you have a decent sized army. Westeros has much larger factions, far more lords, so it's much more difficult. But whether, if you choose to start your kingdom in Essos or Westeros, I suggest that you stick with one continent before conquering the other. I conquered Essos before moving to Westeros. If you're starting in Westeros, you might want to conquer that before moving on Essos. Just a, just a precaution. Now, managing lords once you're king is probably the most tedious part in any Mountain Blade Warband game. Myself, I give them one fief each, a castle or a village. I'm, I'm giving them castles because garrison ca garrisoning castles costs money. However, if you promise a lord that you will reward them with lands if they join you. You might want to give them maybe two castles or something. Also, when you form your kingdom at the very start, you want to make sure your policy is very aristocratic. Every couple weeks, your lords gain a boost in relation with you if you do that, so that's useful. Another way to help manage your lords is um, whenever you're fighting in a tournament in one of the towns, you should probably dedicate it to a lady who has 
zero relation with you. Because later, if a lady is married and you could all and she has a little relation with you, you could go to her and ask her to mediate a dispute between you, yourself, and a lord who has negative relation with you. By giving her a thousand coins, it increases the lord's relation with you by one until eventually he's back up to zero relation with you. So that's a good way to keep lords happy if you're interested in that sort of thing. That or risk them defecting to another faction. I've also mentioned that uh, you can tell lords to besiege castles for you and if you help them take it uh, they will go up one in relation with you. Another way to increase your relations with your lords I find is um, ordering them to follow you and you'll have to go back after a day and night to tell them to follow you again otherwise they may just leave. And they won't follow you if they have negative relation with you so you need to have a little relation with the lords but if they still have fairly low relation with you, you can always take them into bandit infested territory like uh, this area here is full of Iron Man pirates around the wall. There are wildlings over here. There are mountain clansmen. Take them to those areas. If you see one, let's just say I'm here. I see some mountain clansmen here. I can say uh, patrol around Crofter's village. If he's fast enough, he'll catch up to the mountain clansmen. If you join in and help defeat him and talk to him later, he'll say, I profited much from this uh, little venture of yours and he'll go up three in relation with you. I find those are good ways to help increase your relation with your lords, but that's useful in most any warband mod. Anyway, that's about all the advice I have for you about A World of Ice and Fire. I hope you've all found this information useful. I'm not going to tell you to enjoy it because, well, it's all rather dull information, but at the very least I hope it was useful to you. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time. See you then.